In this lecture, we will explore cloud DNS. DNS is a hierarchical distributed database that lets you store IP addresses and other data and then you can look them up by name. For example, google.com's IP address is 74.125.29.101. So instead of typing in the IP address each time, you can type in www.google.com into the browser and a DNS server will look up the IP address of that name and then connect you to that specific server. Google's Cloud DNS lets you publish your zones and records in the global DNS without the burden of managing your own DNS servers and software. So there's some features that Cloud DNS provides. It provides a fast anycast name server. So these name servers are there to serve your DNS zones from redundant locations around the world, providing high availability. Scalability and availability. Cloud DNS can support a very large number of zones and DNS records per zone. You can create managed zones for your project and then you can change and delete the DNS records. You can control the permissions for these at the project level. You can manage DNS records using the Google Cloud Platform console or you can even use scriptable gcloud command line tools to manage these records. Private DNS zones provide an easy to manage internal DNS solution for the private GCP networks. DNS forwarding allows a hybrid cloud architecture where it provides a fully managed product where it lets you use your existing DNS servers as authoritative and intelligent caching, which makes sure that your queries are performed efficiently. You can log records for every DNS query that's received from VMs and inbound forwarding flows. You can view DNS logs in Stackdriver and export these logs to any other destination. DNS peering makes available a second method of sharing DNS data. All or a portion of the DNS namespace can be configured to be sent from one network to another. Managed zones hold DNS records for the same DNS name suffix, like example.com, for example. A project can have multiple managed zones, but they must each have a unique name. In Cloud DNS, the managed zone is a resource that models a DNS zone. All the records in a managed zone are hosted on the same Google operated name servers. These name servers respond to DNS queries against your managed zone according to how you configure the zone. And a project can contain multiple managed zones. However, note that charges accrue for each zone for each day that the managed zone exists. You can use labels to organize your billing. A public zone is visible to the internet. So a cloud DNS has public authoritative name servers that respond to queries about public zones, regardless of where the queries originate. Cloud DNS assigns a set of DNS name servers when a public zone is created. You can create DNS records in a public zone to publish your service on the internet. The name servers have to be specified in your domain registrar settings. So here you can see an example of an A record for www.example.com with a time to live of 300 and then you would provide a public IP address. A private zones enable you to manage custom domain names for your virtual machines, load balancers, and other GCP resources without exposing the underlying DNS data to the public internet. A private zone is a container of DNS records. 
This can only be queried by one or more VPC networks that you authorize. A private zone can also be queried by resources in the same project where it is defined. The VPC networks that you authorize must be located in the same project as the private zone. You can override this with DNS peering. Private zones don't support DNS security extensions, which is the DNSSEC. Requests for DNS records in private zones must be submitted through the metadata server, which is 169.254.169.254. This is the default internal name server for VMs that's created from Google supplied images. You can submit queries to the name server from any virtual machine that uses an authorized VPC network. Here you can see an example of private zones and these can be accessed by their DNS names. So the instance-01.dev.gcp.example.com is mapped to 10.128.1.10 and so on. These can't be seen from the internet. A forwarding zone is a type of cloud DNS managed private zone. It sends requests for that zone to the IP addresses of its forwarding targets. A peering zone is a type of cloud DNS managed private zone that follows the name resolution order of another VPC network. And this can be used to resolve the names that are defined in the other VPC network. However, DNS peering is a one-way relationship. It allows GCP resources in the DNS consumer network to look up records in the peering zone's namespace. The DNS producer and consumer networks must be GCP VPC networks though. DNS peering and VPC network peering are different services. DNS peering can be used in conjunction with VPC network peering, but VPC network peering is not required. It's not required if you want to do DNS peering. All the changes and updates that you make for managed zones are logged to an operator or logged to an operations collective and this can be queried through the API or a command line. Virtual private cloud networks on GCP have an internal DNS service as well that allows instances in the same network to access each other by using internal DNS names. The internal DNS name of a VM instance only resolves to its primary internal IP address. Only resources in the same project VPC can make use of this. The internal DNS names are automatically created by GCP and different from cloud DNS records. The usual format for these are instance name .zone .c dot project id dot internal and for the projects that are created before september 6 2018 the format does not have the zone in it please note that you can't change these these are created by the google cloud platform automatically you can set up dns forwarding between your non-gcp name servers and gcp's internal name servers VPC networks support both inbound and outbound DNS forwarding using DNS server policies. Inbound requests must originate from systems in networks connected to the VPC by Cloud VPN Tunnel or inter Interconnect. Cloud DNS private managed zones support outbound DNS forwarding by means of forwarding zones. Here we can see an example of two VPC networks prod and dev that have DNS forwarding configured. The dev network is connected to an on-prem data center in Europe with a cloud VPN tunnel using dynamic routing. The prod network is connected to an on-prem data center in Asia, Europe and the US with cloud VPN tunnels. The DNS policies are created for both the dev and production cloud VPN networks to enable outbound forwarding to the on-prem name servers. DNSSEC, DNS security authenticates 
responses to domain name lookups. This helps prevent attackers from manipulating or spoofing DNS requests. In order to use this, you need to have this enabled for specific zones. The domain name registry for the TLD must also have a DS record. So you need to set this up on the registrar. The clients also need to have the capability to validate the DNSSEC signatures. This can be done by public services like Google Public DNS or Verizon has their own public DNS. You can use a combination of public and private zones in what's called a split horizon DNS configuration. This is useful if you have a separate dev, corporate and production VPC networks. So here in the private zone, you create a single record foo.gcp.example.com and that sends it to a certain IP address. And then in the public zone, you create two records, one for the foo and one for the bar and with separate IP addresses. So here, a query for foo.gcp.example.com from a VM in your VPC network returns 10.128.1.35. So a query for foo.gcp.example.com from the internet returns a different IP address, 104.198.6.142. A query for bar.gcp.example.com from a VM in your VPC network returns a domain error because there is no record for bar in the private zone. A query for bar from the internet will return the correct 104.198.7.145. Cloud DNS uses Anycast to serve your managed zones from multiple locations around the world. Requests are automatically routed to the nearest location, reducing latency and improving authoritative name lookup performance for the users. So the process of propagation of changes are the changes for the changes are pushed from the API to the cloud DNS authority at your DNS servers. Then, then the DNS resolvers must pick it up when their cache of records expires. And then the cache is controlled by a TTL value. Some DNS resolvers will ignore this, which causes even more delays. In this demo, we'll create a managed public zone. In this demo, we'll learn how to manipulate cloud DNS records and managed zones. So if this is your first time here, make sure your billing is set up. We're here in our Google Cloud Platform dashboard. Make sure your billing is set up and you're in the correct project. It's down here. Create a new project if you need to. I'm selecting networking demo. Now let's go to the, the instructions for these demos are in your project resources or lecture resources. So cloud DNS demo one, create a managed public zone. So let's go to the navigation menu and scroll down to networking, network services and cloud DNS. So let's create our first zone, create zone. Let's name our zone. Demo public and we can select zone type public and the DNS name for this. We have DNSSEC off and then we can create So do we do have so our so we just created our first public zone. So if we go back here, then we can click on cloud DNS, we can see our public zone here. In this demo, we'll create a managed private zone. Demo two, create a managed private zone. So in a similar fashion, we can do 
create zone and then select private instead and the zone name say demo private and then here it should be demo private dot our domain name and then we can choose our options here whether we want to have forwarding enabled or DNS peering or just standard and then we can select our networks here since this is a private since this is a private zone we have to select our VPC network in this case I'm gonna select VPC demo 1 and create now a private DNS zone has been created. In this demo, we'll create an A record. Demo 3, create an A record. So let's go back to our navigation menu. Networking, networking services, cloud DNS. So now let's select our public zone and then click add record set. And here we can add our records. So the DNS name, let's set it to a wildcard and resource type A and the IP address. I've selected one from the external IP address of a VM machine. So you can press create. And our A record has been created. In this demo, we'll create a C name record. Demo 4, create a C name record. In a similar fashion, we go to our zone and then add record set. And we can select the C name record here for the same resource and set the canonical name for it. So we can say www.podsnap.club and press create. So now our CNAME record has been created. For more details, check the link in the description. Learn with Wits Labs. Success certified.